Right, I'm easing myself back into the Wednesday videos again with a short video on the Bobber Black. You may remember a few months ago I produced a video on how to fit the Motown Customs Union Jack tank pads to the T120. Now this video was received quite well, it proved to be quite popular. And rightly so, because Motown tell me that this tank pad is just about their best seller. Now talking to Sam at Motown a few weeks ago, he disclosed to me that he was getting a few emails from people asking when a version was gonna be available for the Bobbers. Now I have to admit, to my eye, the Bobber tank does look a little bit unfinished. It's got a minimalist look, which I understand, but it has a certain something missing to me, a tank pad. Now obviously Triumph do sell their own version for this and it would appear that people are of the mistaken belief that because the Bobber tank is much smaller than the T120 and the other water-cooled twins that the Motone tank pad won't fit, it would be too big. But that's not the case. It's true you do have a little bit less room to play with but that's a good thing in a way because it does ensure that you get the tank pad in place properly more or less first time. So for bobber owners and those of you who may have missed the last video I'm going to quickly go through it again. Now obviously the bobber doesn't have a tank pad fitted as standard so we don't need to go through the removal of that like I did with the T120. The first thing to do once you've unpacked both your tank pads is just offer them up with the backing paper still on just to get an idea of where they're going to go. Now about the rear third of the tank there is actually a flat bit along the bottom which does facilitate easy alignment. All you then have to do is work out where it has to go vertically and I settle for about half or quarter of an inch above that bottom straight line of the tank with the pad quite far back towards the rear of the tank. In fact, I use the actual bolts that hold the tank in place as a guard line to make sure that I got both sides on symmetrically. Once you've got your eye in and you know whereabouts you're gonna put the actual tank pad, the next thing that you need to do is give the tank a good thorough clean in the area where you're going to fix the tank pad. Now I use a panel wipe or pre-paint wipe. This is the kind of stuff that body shops use for preparing paint work before applying paint. But you can get away with using alcohol wipes, the type that they use to swab uh, an area of skin before giving you an injection. You'll probably need a couple of these, one for each side. I think you can get them on the internet or you may be able to get them from your local chemist if you don't want to invest in some panel wipe. Give the whole area a good thorough clean and then allow it to dry. And it's time to offer your tank pad up again. Now the Motown tank pads do come pre-applied with a 3M adhesive sheet. Now this is really good stuff. And generally speaking, once it comes in contact with the tank, unless you press it down firmly, it will allow you to pull the pad off and realign it one or two times before settling on your final position. That's the way it's designed to work. It doesn't reach full strength as soon as it comes in contact with the pin. It takes a number of hours after application before full adhesion is achieved. However, this warm weather that we're having does affect the way that it works and it does grab quite aggressively straight away. My advice if you're going to fit one of these is wait for a cooler day or do it in an evening when the temperatures are cooler. It may even be advantageous while the weather is warm to stick your tank pads into the freezer for half an hour before application just to cool the adhesive down so that it's not quite as aggressive. Now once you've removed the backing paper, gently offer it up to a position that you're happy with and then allow the pad to contact the paint wet. Don't press it down at this point. Look at it from all angles to ensure that it's sitting straight and it's sitting where it pleases you. The current high temperatures aside, it should allow you a couple of attempts at peeling it off and repositioning it if necessary. But if it's a blistering hot day, it may be problematic. Just be aware of that. Once you're happy with its position, with the heel of your hand, firmly go all around the pad all around the edges and the center to make sure that the entire surface area of the pad is firmly contacting the paint and that side is done. 
Now your second tank pad is exactly the same procedure. The only added complication is that you need to get it relatively in exactly the same position as the other side. It has to be a mirror image, if you like. There's nothing worse than riding your bike and looking down at the tank pads and realizing that one is half an inch further forward than the other. So take your time with this. Remember not to firm it down so that it will give you the facility of removing it and realigning it if necessary. Look at it from all angles, use the same reference points on both sides of the bike to make sure that you've got it in the right position before firming it down. Now if all's gone according to plan, these things are pretty much permanently fixed. Although, as I've explained before, with the use of a hairdryer and some careful peeling, they can be removed if you need to. I'm not going to go on about the quality and the look of these pads. We've done that before and to be quite honest, these pads speak for themselves. And I think the number of people fitting these worldwide pretty much tells you all you need to know about them. Now this is the Union Jack version. They do also do a plain version, but I like the Union Jack, so that's the one I fitted. Now we're still waiting for Merton to bring out some of the bobber specific parts. A lot of those are still in development and we will get onto those in due course. But for the time being, I have raided Merton's part shelves of a few bits that are applicable to the bobber. And over the next few weeks, we will be going through some of those. Don't forget, leave it 24 hours before re-waxing your tank just to give the adhesive chance to get a good firm grip and solidify itself. The last thing you need is the petroleum distillate from your polish getting behind the pad and loosening it anywhere. Another job well done. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that you found it useful. If you have enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe to this channel. I will leave a link to Merton's product page for these tank pads if you're interested in the video description down below. I will be back on Friday, so until then, please ride safely and I'll see you soon.